As time marches ever onward, tabletop RPGs have become less about the mechanics and the battles, and more about the characters and the narrative. Sure, the grid battles and the rule lawyers will always have a place in this medium, but at the core of these games has always been characters and their stories. The interactions with other player characters and the NPCs, and especially the villains. The wins and losses, the points of no return. I feel even games run strictly for their mechanics have a lasting effect as stories, because that's what they're remembered as. You don't remember a story as, I got an at 20 and did 30 points of damage in one big swing. You remember it as, I got an at 20, grabbed the necromancer mid-air, and performed a torpedo suplex that shattered the stone flooring under us. But no matter your level of comfort in role-playing and acting, there's always an aspect of storytelling that this medium has always had trouble with. Call the police. And it makes sense. You're playing this game with a bunch of your friends, people you likely don't have any romantic chemistry with, and thus performing these kind of character, gushy, sweet, cutesy moments can be a combination of hilarious, awkward, and gross. And do we even want to talk about if you happen to actually like the person that you're actually interacting with? No, God! But damn it, I love storytelling in these games. I love when players form in-game friendships that bleed into real life. I love when the team gets invested in NPC's drama, no matter how minor it is. And I love romance. I love love stories, even the bad ones. It's trash, but it's good. So for one of my favorite creative outlets not naturally catering to human emotions because of human emotions, it can make me a sad game runner. Or it would, if not for the internet. With the World Wide Weave, players and game masters alike can build so many wonderful stories and worlds from across their own. And with the added mechanic of anonymity, this word, you have the ability to don a drawing you Google searched or commissioned to act as your face. Via Discord, Roll20, or what have you, we can all hide behind our characters and microphones to immerse ourselves deeper into the lies we've written and crafted through all the dice rolls past. Sometimes you can get a bunch of players who don't need to hide behind their characters to immerse themselves in the actual story. And that's totally fine if you're comfortable with that, if you already have a theater background and are able to separate the fact from the fiction. But when you're not so comfortable with putting yourself in that spot, and then you have to act on those thoughts, it's obviously very weird. But consider this. Actors do in fact have to do this all the time, and I don't just mean the paid ones. Even kids have to put on plays where they have to pretend to like each other. You doing this for fun, to flex your ad-lib skills and acting chops, isn't any weirder than what I've already mentioned. And look, let's just cut the bullshit here. If you're watching a video wanting to understand how to get romance in D&D, which I'm very certain I've used every possible means of making sure that's what this video is about. You already were a little curious, or the concept of playing D&D and acting out fictional stories for fictional people is no longer weird to you anyway. And if you want more tips besides hiding behind a screen or getting over the awkward NO! Here are some tips to make your tabletop role-playing games a little bit more romantic, or at least have the potential for it. First off, don't let players do the fuck. Even as a joke, don't roll for how well someone did the ding dang do and go into immense detail about it. You will make everyone uncomfortable or laugh so effectively that nothing will ever be taken seriously at your table ever again. Imply things happened and move on. But Game of Thrones did it and you compare D&D to Avengers and I hate that Game of Thrones does it and it is the worst part of Game of Thrones. Fight me. Discuss with your players or open up the chance for players to discuss with you some romantic subplots. Maybe an interaction was really cute or some light teasing sparked an interest in future storylines for you or your players. Nothing can be more uncomfortable than a DM pushing a character into the PCs and really vice versa. That's no different with romance potential. Make it clear to both members of the game that one of you feels there's potential here, and you want to explore where that can go in a creative outlet like this, and allow for character growth to build or to end quickly. And especially, go for the long game. As a player, don't rush the romance. Let the moments grow between the characters. Attempt this whole mushy stuff. And as a GM, don't let your ships blind you to other players' needs. Let the player come to you and then create your reenactment of Lady and the Tramp. 
D&D is a commitment to time and creation, and some story beats just don't come through until months and sometimes years from their introduction. Treat the in-game relationships with the same level of patience and gravitas. Give them time to happen. Give them time to grow. D&D in any tabletop role-playing game can in fact include romance between player characters and NPCs, and with a creative and mature enough audience, you can make a game with player-to-player -player romance and not make it awkward. I'll admit you have to already be in a writer and actor's mindset to really pull this off, but that's why a lot of people come to these games, because they want to practice ad-lib, they want to practice acting, and putting themselves in situations they normally wouldn't. If that's not for you, if you watch this video and think, this didn't convince me that romance needs to be in D&D, that's fine. It was never supposed to convince you. It was supposed to help those who've always wanted to attempt it or understand that this is not that awkward, it's not that bad, there is a way to make this happen, just hear someone else say it. Be mature, be respectful, be creative. That's all you have to do to make fun romance in Dungeons and Dragons or any tabletop RPG. I hope this helped you guys ponder the potential of romance in TTRPGs and that this information can help add that little bit of spice to your already great stories. Don't let players do the fuck.